All right, so let's get into some numbers, okay? The Falcons, in their four wins, averaged 28.75 points per game. The Falcons, in their six losses, averaged 19.5 points per game. When the Falcons run for 167 yards or more, let's back up for just a second. In the Falcons' four wins, they average 179 yards rushing in their four wins. In their six losses, they average 148 yards. Now, most teams would kill to average 148 yards, and they're going to win a lot of games because they can throw it competently and everything that goes along with that. Not this team, though. 179 in their four wins, 148 in their six losses. When they run for 167 yards or more in a game, they are 4-2. and two. When they run for 166 yards or less, they are 0-4 on the season. Okay? When they throw it, 20 when they have 20 or less pass attempts they are 3 and 1 when they are 21 or more 1 and 5 these are not just random numbers this is what their offensive identity is when they have run for 167 yards and thrown it less or thrown it 20 times or less they're 3 and 0 oh. that's their blueprint is that an easy formula? Not at all. If you have to run for 170 yards in a game to win, that's that's awfully tough to do. That's a really tough challenge that you have to have to run for 170 yards and not throw it 20 times to almost ensure victory. But that's the path of this team. That's where this team is. So, again, I promise you, I'm some jabron sitting here, you know, figuring all this stuff out. I sure as hell know that somebody else, you know, coaches can figure all this out and understand what to do. And, and by the way, when I talk about blueprints, I'm never going to forget Bruce Arians when he was the head coach in Arizona, okay? Their offense in Arizona had gotten bogged down and stagnated and stuff like that. And people are like, well, coach, why is your offense suddenly just – not getting it going and all this kind of stuff. And I'll never forget what Bruce Arians said at his press conference. He said, you know, the guys on the defensive side of the football get paid too, right? You, you know, those coaches on that side of the football, they get paid as well, right? Meaning that, you know, you may run it really well and do this and that, but you know, those guys are, are getting paid to figure out how to stop you. And that's what teams are going to do. I can give you 125, 130 yards. You know, the NFL, that 100-yard rushing number is sort of the magic number. No defense wants to give up 100 yards. But with this team, I can give you 125, 130 rushing yards and beat you. I can't give you 170 and beat you. And that's, I'm telling you, that you watch that teams will allow the Falcons to in some ways establish their run identity, but not run all over them. Because the Falcons, if they don't run for 167 yards, they haven't won a game. They haven't won a game where they've run for 166 yards or less. Think about that, 166. That's where we're at with this trend. So like it or not, that's the pathway. All right, I want to talk about the offensive line as well. Well, they can't block or this, any other. Okay, let's talk about that. First off, you're on your third guard. You literally are down to the third string guard because you've had Elijah Wilkinson, who's been a massive upgrade. Let's make sure we understand this. Look at every metric imaginable. This offensive line is drastically better than they were last year. Drastically. Better run block, better pass block, better pass block efficiency, guys individually are better this year. And last year, they dropped back 600 times. They had 560 pass attempts, and Matt Ryan took 40 sacks. That's 600 dropbacks. You know where they're at right now? 10 games into the season? They have 220 pass attempts. I think it's 222, I think is what their pass attempt total is. 222 pass attempts. 
for the season. They dropped back 600 times last year with an offensive line drastically worse. Jalen Mayfield was the worst interior offensive lineman in the NFL, probably the single worst offensive lineman across the entire league. And he played and started all 17 games last year. And Hennessy wasn't very good. So one of the things that they're going to have to do is they have to replace Drew Dahlman at center. All he keeps doing is getting pushed and pushed and pushed backward. And now he can't snap the football either. There was at least six or seven snaps in shotgun where Mariota has to bend down and grab the ball on the ground. You can't have that because now you're also losing time for him to be able to gather himself and throw the football. So I'm telling you, when Hennessy gets healthy and he's back, that's the first thing I do is I replace my center because Hennessy can't be worse than, than what Drew Dahlman is right now. Dahlman's killing this offensive line. And look, Derek Brown blew up everybody last night. And, and you know, I just got done bragging about Caleb McGarry and how good he's been and all this good kind of stuff, right? We just talked about how good he's been. But he still struggles in obvious pass downs when defensive linemen can line up and pin their ears back. He still cannot handle those speed guys coming around. Last night, that final sack was just ridiculous. He's There's a guy standing right on the end that he's got a block and he goes inside. When he can run block you and look at his run blocking grades, they're outstanding this year. Again, this is how we profiled in college. Go back and read his NFL profile. When he can grab you and lock you up, he will move you where he wants to move you. When you go whoop around the outside, he can't handle you. Guy gets a quick step, whoop, your quarterback's on the ground. And it doesn't help that Mariota stands back there and just won't throw the football out of bounds. Won't throw it out of bounds. So look, their identity, they're third in the NFL in run blocking grade this year. Third. And they're 13th going into last night in pass efficiency grade. Their offensive line is able to hang up. If they're healthy and you've got Wilkinson and you've got Matthews and you've got Lindstrom and McGarry, they're capable for what they need to do. Now, let's talk about the passing game, okay? What have we said a million times on this show? Short, quick route, one read, throw. Short, quick route, one read, throw. Short, quick route, one read, throw. That's Mariota. You can't let him linger around. You can't let him, you know, fluffle around back there. You can't let him just scramble around. You can't do any of that stuff. And if that means your yards per attempt isn't very high, good. That's fine. Get Pitts in a quick slant in open space throw to him. Because your linebackers and safeties aren't going to be able to cover him. Short, quick route, one read, throw. Don't think, don't react, don't do anything. You got a hot read, that's your guy, throw it and go. It's worked. That that it, When they've won, that's been their philosophy. It's worked. But when you start letting him huck it downfield, and he's heaving it downfield, and he's scrambling around, and look, that hasn't worked. That's why 20 is that magic number. You don't ask him to do too much in all of this. We'll to remind you guys to make sure that you make Locked On Sports Today your second listen. The biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Locked On Sports Today podcast is free and available on Odyssey, YouTube, and all of your favorite podcast platforms. But the philosophy and the strategy for him has worked. Short, quick route, one read, throw. Short, quick route, one read, throw. Not scramble around, huck it here, miss a guy here, throw it all over here. This is why if you're going to play Mariota, and that's fine. I, it's not my favorite decision, but I understand all of the things. I understand the pre-snap. I understand the leader. I understand all of the different intangibles that go into this. If you're going to do that, then play to his strengths. Make sure you stay committed to the run. Make sure that he basically is getting, you stay ahead of the chains. Make sure that short, quick route, one read throw. That's what he does. You can find, a, look, they've won four out of 10 games. You can find a way to win and your pathway is there. But you have to play to those strengths. 
And at times, they just start getting away from all of that. They start fluffling around and all this kind of stuff. 